गिवन क्वेश्चन द डिस्क ऑफ ए टॉरिशनल पेंडुलम हैज ए मास मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ऑफ झीरो पॉइंट झीरो सिक्स किलोग्राम मीटर स्क्वेर द ब्रास शाफ्ट अटैच टू इट इज ऑफ हंड्रेड मिलीमीटर डायमीटर एंड फोर हंड्रेड मिलीमीटर लॉन्ग वेन द पेंडुलम इज व्हाइब्रेटिंग द ऑब्जर्व एम्पलीट्यूड्स ऑन द सेम साइड ऑफ रेस्ट पोजिशन फॉर सक्सेसिव साइकल्स आर नाइन डिग्री सिक्स डिग्री एंड फोर डिग्री फाइंड फर्स्ट लॉगैरिथमिक डिक्रीमेंट सेकंड डैम्पिंग टॉर्क एट यूनिट वेलोसिटी थर्ड पीरियोडिक टाइम ऑफ वाइब्रेशन अज्यूम द मॉड्यूलस ऑफ रिजिडिटी एज फोर पॉइंट फोर इंटू टेन रेस टू टेन न्यूटन पर मीटर स्क्वेर फोर्थ वॉट वुड बी द फ्रिक्वेंसी इफ द डिस्क इज रिमूव फ्रॉम विस्कस फ्लूड This is the question for torsional vibration of the shaft and disc arrangement. Let us understand given data. Mass moment of inertia of the disc is given. I is equal to zero point zero six kilogram meter square. Now diameter and the length of the shaft is also mentioned in millimeter, but we have to use the standard unit meter. So D is equal to zero point one meter and L is equal to zero point four meter. Now what is happening during the torsional vibration? Suppose we will consider the rest position is the main position of this disc shaft arrangement. Then after the initial displacement is given, then this disc vibrates on both sides about this axis. So in this towards the right hand side direction or we can say in anti clockwise direction and in clockwise direction about the axis so this process is known as vibration now here the amplitude of the vibration on the same side of the mean position is given so it is given on either right hand side that is in clockwise direction or either in anti clockwise direction so it is on the same side of the main position so we will take the numbers as a x1 x2 x3 because the successive amplitudes on the same side are mentioned in the question so x1 is 9 degree x2 is 6 degree and x3 is 4 degree now value of g that is the modulus of rigidity for this shaft is given 4.4 into 10 raised to 10 newton per meter square then z that is the polar moment of inertia of the shaft now why we have to consider the value of z that is the polar moment of inertia of the shaft so it is resistance to the torsional motion of the disc because the disc is attached to the shaft and when the torsional vibration is taking place of for this disc then the resistance is offered by the shaft and this is nothing but the value of z so we have to calculate that so it is in the form of rod so we will take here pi by 32 d raised to 4 so when we put the value of d 0.21 then we will get 9.81 Seven four into ten raised to minus six meter raised to four. So we have to use this value of z. Now how to calculate the torsional stiffness for this shaft? So this shaft will uh, act like spring. So we can say that here we have to find out kT because here the torsional vibration is taking place. So kT is equal to t by theta but here instead of torque and theta that is not mentioned so we can also use formula g z by l where g is the modulus of rigidity for the shaft z polar moment of inertia of the shaft and l length of the shaft so using this formula we can find out the torsional stiffness kt for the shaft Now we will move to the first question: logarithmic decrement of the disc. Now the successive amplitudes on the same side of the main position are given. So how to plot the successive amplitudes? So suppose uh, around the both sides of the main position, this disc vibrates. So how we can 
शोध हियर सो दिस इज वी विल कंसीडर दिस इज एक्स वन देन ऑन द सेम साइड ऑफ द मेन पोजीशन सो वी विल कंसीडर द अपर साइड देन दिस इज एक्स टू एंड हियर दिस इज एक्स थ्री सो दिस एक्स वन एक्स टू एक्स थ्री आर मेंशन सो लॉगरिथमिक डिक्रीमेंट ऑफ द डिस्क वी हैव फॉर्मूला डेल्टा इज इक्वल टू वन डिवाइडेड बाय एन माइनस वन लॉक टू द बेसी एक्स वन बाय एक्स एन नाउ वी विल कंसीडर एन इज इक्वल टू टू देन वन डिवाइडेड बाय टू माइनस वन लॉग ऑफ एक्स वन बाय एक्स टू सो एक्स वन इज नाइन एंड एक्स टू इज सिक्स सो वी हैव टू यूज हियर नाइन बाय सिक्स दैट इज फाइव सो वन डिवाइडेड बाय वन इज वन एंड लॉग ऑफ वन पॉइंट फाइव विच इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट फोर जीरो फाइव Now we will move to the next question. Damping torque. That is the meaning of damping coefficient for the torsional system. That means we have to find out the value of C T. So how to find out that? We have formula zeta is equal to delta divided by under root of four pi square plus delta square, where delta is the logarithmic decrement. So we will calculate the value of zeta, that is damping factor, zero point zero six four three. So damping factor is the ratio of damping coefficient divided by critical damping coefficient. So we have to use here the torsional system. So we will use the suffix t. So zeta is equal to c t divided by c c t. Now, what is this critical damping coefficient for the torsional system? So that is equal to two under root of k t into i, where k t is the torsional stiffness for the shaft. K. So we have to first calculate k t by using the formula g z by l. So all the values are known, and the answer is one point zero seven nine nine into ten raised to six newton meter per rad. Now, when we put this value of K T as well as I, that is the mass moment of inertia of the disc is also known. Zeta is calculated, then we will get the damping coefficient or damping torque C T is equal to thirty two point seven three seven six newton meter second per radius. If we compare the shaft and disc arrangement with spring mass and dashboard system, then This shaft will be equivalent to the spring with stiffness k, and that's why the shaft is having torsional stiffness k. Then this disc is equivalent to mass m, and this disc is having mass moment of inertia i. Now what about the dashboard? So we will consider here this disc is in contact with viscous fluid. and this viscous fluid is equivalent to the dashboard in the linear system now the next question we have to calculate periodic time of vibration of the system so for this system we have to calculate periodic time that is which is equivalent to spring mass dashboard system that is this is the case for the damped free vibration so this periodic time is known as td because for the damped system we will use here the suffix d so we have to find out this td and to find out this td we have to first calculate or find out omega d so how to calculate omega d so omega d uh, is in terms of omega n we have formula so first we will find out omega n that is the natural frequency and omega n natural frequency for this torsional system is under root of kt by i so this kt that is the stiffness torsional stiffness is known then i that is the mass moment of inertia for the disc is also known and omega n is equal to 4242.442 radians per second now we can calculate omega d that is the frequency for damped system so omega d is equal to omega n under root of 1 minus zeta square so when we put value we will get the answer 4233.6649 radians per second Now from this omega d we can calculate time period td. 
सो टी डी इज इक्वल टू टू पाई बाय ओमेगा डी विच इज इक्वल टू टू पाई डिवाइडेड बाय वी हैव टू पुट दिस वैल्यू एंड आंसर इज वन पॉइंट फोर एट फोर वन इंटू टेन रेस टू माइनस थ्री सेकंड नाउ द लास्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द डिस्क नाउ वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ डिस्क सो हियर फॉर द डैम्प सिस्टम वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट एफ डी but we will consider here this disk is removed from the viscous fluid that is the disk is not in contact with viscous fluid then we have to calculate here natural frequency that is fn so how to calculate this fn fn is equal to omega n by 2 pi so when we put this value of omega n then we will get the answer 675.2059 hertz so this is the natural frequency of the disk and when this disk is in contact with viscous fluid then we have to calculate fd